Good morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum, and the Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, hey, good morning. How are you doing? Um, Mr. Beaver is with us. He's just having a slight, slight technical issue at the moment. So he asked me to start things off. So here we are. It's a beautiful Monday morning. I don't know what it's like out. I haven't even looked out the window, to be honest with you. It is a Monday morning, though, and we are going to start this day off right. I hope. I certainly plan to. I have a full mug of coffee. And I'm ready to roll. We do have a special guest joining us. He's in the green room. We're just going to wait for Mr. Beaver to come back. I am excited about today because uh, we we featured some of his content on this past Friday's show. And this gentleman um, sums it up very, very nicely. And I, I was in complete agreement with what he had to say about Mr. Blaine Hicks. But before we get to that, I need to uh, thank our sponsors, the Miss Fee Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, CanadianTarot.com and the Peppermaster, because they've been with us since before we even started on the air. They've been our title sponsors from day one, and we're really happy to uh, to continue working with those fine folks, because they are lovely. So Mr. Beaver, I see, has joined us in the green room, and I think it's okay to start. Give me a thumbs up if you're good to go, sir. He's good to go. Here we are. All right. Well, good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to Season 3 and Episode 290 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. Yeah. Today, Spirit Fingers. Spirit Fingers. Today, recording day is Monday, January 8th, 2024. I remembered this time, and yes. <laughs> it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas 2025 <laughs> here at the Beaver. It's, it actually, <laughs> there's a ton of snow out there, and I think we're getting, uh, <laughs> we got about 10 centimeters already, and I think we're getting another 10 to 20 on Wednesday, uh, Tuesday, and then I think freezing rain on Thursday. So it's it's an Ottawa winter. Ah, uh, in, in earnest. Uh, over here as well, we're going to be getting a little rain, but apparently all this week here at the Beaver Lodge, it's going to be zero or higher. So I'm not yeah, sure so how long this snow is going to stay <laughs> again. This is really putting a, a crimp in my ski season, I can tell you that. Really, right? Oh, man, I'm your host, the Eager Beaver Pronouns, he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver, hey, and with me as always is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly. Sorry for the late start. Uh, tech was Stop super happens. temperamental. Uh, pages wouldn't load, uh, email wouldn't send, and then when the show started, I was hearing double. But I think we've got it all figured out. <laughs> so, <laughs> Better than seeing double, though, I guess. Not seeing double, fortunately. <laughs> um, a big thank you goes to our podcast founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Miss V Mysteries Ooh. from Corvid Moon Publishing. Oh, you were moving there. <laughs> yeah. And CanadianTarot.com. We have a very, very special show for you, as Mr. Grizzly was telling you, because we have a wonderful guest with us today. But before we bring him in, Mr. Grizzly, how is your mental health today, sir? 
So here's the funny thing. I woke up at 2 a.m. and didn't get back to sleep till 5, which is why I sent you all the information later than normal because I crawled out of bed at 6.30. Hmm. Uh, I slept from... Uh, I woke up again at 6 and then just kept hitting snooze for 30 minutes. So I should probably feel terrible emotionally and mentally, but oddly enough, I'm in a super great mood. My stomach's off and I got a splitting headache, but I'm in a great mood. So I, I, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll run with it. I'm not going to question it. It is what it is. And it's working for me to, this morning. So uh, I'm just going to run with that. Yeah, absolutely. Run with it. Don't question it if you're feeling good. Uh, good morning to you all, the best damn fam in all of podcasting. Kit, Dan, Kit, Elaine, Kit, Kendra, Kit, Ellen. Lovely to see you this morning. Kit, Freddie, with the very, very interesting handle. <laughs> uh, wait, wait, wait. An interesting wait. handle actually has levels here. But um, we're, we're not going to say it. But, uh, <laughs> we'll probably use that term at some point today. <laughs> uh, Kit Mohan is here. Good morning to you, Kit Linda M. Kit Bruce, hey. Nice to see you, Mohbu, hey. Uh, let's see, Kit Hugh as well has been joining us. Lovely morning to you, sir. Plus, we have Kit Obsessive Audio is with us as well. Good morning. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. And Kit Chen, hello, dear. It's been a while since we've seen you here in the morning. So lovely mm -hmm. to have you back. I hope everything's going well. We've missed you, and you have been missed. Uh, also by the Madame fam as well, as we can see by the chat. Good morning, Kit Cassie, Kit Donna, and Kit Saucy. Thank you all for joining us today. We, as we mentioned, have a guest. Um... A gentleman from New Brunswick. Now we are going to be paying special attention to New Brunswick this year because there is a, a general election in the province this October. And it is, so far, there's going to be three general elections this year. One in Saskatchewan, one in British Columbia, and one in New Brunswick. But this is the one that's going to capture our attention because it's the one where there's the greatest possibility or likelihood of a government flipping. Yeah, we think so. Yes. So we will be paying a lot of attention to New Brunswick uh, this year, Kits and Cubs. And this person is a satire writer for the Banatee Magazine, a publication that you should definitely support. Absolutely. Yes. And pretty much that's all he told us he wants us to mention in the bio, but he's here <laughs> fair. Uh, not to talk about anything um, satire. Uh, today, it's going to be a very, very, very serious subject. As you know, Kids and Cubs, we've been talking a lot on our show about Premier Blaine Higgs. Um, his political fortunes have not been quite good in the last while, and it, it seems that he believes that his road to maintaining power is going through a negative obsession with yes. trans youth. Um, it's, it's almost ground zero for this movement in Canada. And then, of course, Premier Scott Moe decided to hold his keg and actually invoke the notwithstanding clause. But And then other premiers started dabbling in that, some going all the way and some deciding, mm, maybe I shouldn't go there as much. But uh, and we even have the leader of the opposition federally, as indicated in his year-end interviews, uh, even dabbling in that subject. So it seems that hating on some of the most vulnerable it will conservative, the Canadian conservative political movement seems to believe is their path to success. So pretty terrible path. If you ask me a very serious subject today, but we have a guest who's very, very, very well placed to be able to discuss this. And not only because he lives in New Brunswick. So guest. yes. So kids and cubs, please put your paws up and give a big round of a pause for Mr. Sean Rouse. Welcome to the Beaver Lodge, sir. Well, thank you. That's so kind of you guys. Uh, it's great to be here. Oh, it's lovely to have you. And what a nice voice you have. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you, 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 we got to have you on more often. You've got a good podcasting voice. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> you, oh, just, thanks. <laughs> you just fit right in. It's smooth and calm. and I love it. Oh, that's nice of you. Thanks. Ah, all right. Um, Sean, uh, maybe I kind of went off on Friday after reading your. Oh, your, did you? Your I, I didn't get yeah, to hear I, the show, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, no, that's, that's okay. It's, I, I went off. I 
and, and I kind of sprung it on Mr. Beaver. He didn't know I was going to do that. I said, he says, do you have anything else? I said, actually, I do. And it, was it Friday or Thursday? It was Friday. It was Friday. It was Friday. Yeah. And I, I tore into Blaine Higgs after reading, I, I read, I, you know, narrated your, your thread. And it, it uh, was a punch to the gut from Mr. Beaver. It, it made me incredibly angry. And it made me cry. That, 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 yeah. Yeah, uh, it, it was a real punch to the gut for him. Me, it just, I got aggro. It's like, I want to go talk to Mr. Higgs myself yeah. and get up in his grill, as the kids say. This is how I feel. Because what he is doing is horrible. Right. Horrible. Um, I was, as I mentioned in the intro, you are particularly well-placed to be discussing this issue, and I didn't want to speak for you on this uh, issue. So uh, maybe we could start there. Um, how do you come to this issue? And it's not simply because you're a resident of New Brunswick. No, no. Uh, so I have a trans child. So way back in uh, late April, May, we heard that uh, policy 713 was coming under revision in new brunswick my wife said this is terrible what they're doing to policy 713 i said what is policy 713 i never heard of it um and what i came to learn very quickly was it is a policy that is in new brunswick schools that supports to ask the lgbtqia plus students so uh it uh, specifies they can have a welcoming learning environment. It uh, outlines rules around sports teams, and make sure trans uh, kids can play on the team to which they identify. Um, it talks about universal bathrooms. It talks about uh, they could be members of a GSA and uh, not, in, which is a gay straight alliance or mm -hmm. a gender and sexuality alliance, some people call them. So, uh, you know, and uh, not have someone tell their parents that they're part of that club, uh, which is important. Some students uh, have to keep that from their parents uh, for reasons we'll talk about, I'm sure. Uh, and it talked about use of pronouns and preferred names at school. So uh, in the case of a students who are over 16, they get to choose what pronouns and uh preferred name they want to use at school and the school must respect it according to the policy uh, for children under 16 uh, even in the old policy uh, they needed uh, parental permission to have a name change for official record keeping if you want to have a change in the school systems the team roster you know the cast list and I don't know if you guys are know about microsoft teams but it's like a collaboration tool that they use in the classroom yeah, I use it every day exactly so it has your name you know it has your name right there so if you want that name to be your preferred name um you need a parental sign off uh the old policy said if for some reason you can't get that parental sign off we'll accommodate you the best we can and uh anyway so what the they started to do was say uh, this policy is not necessary these children are already protected uh, by the charter of uh, rights and freedoms so they don't need a special policy to protect them at school uh, which and i knew personally from my own experience with my child to use you know the universal bathrooms every day who had a preferred name and pronoun even though they had my permission mm -hmm. they have many friends who uh, some of them uh, have parents who support them and and sadly uh some of those parents don't support their kids so we knew it was important and we uh so i started to uh i'd always been uh, as a satire writer you mentioned my satire that i write i'd always watch politics but uh hadn't really you know gotten off the the sidelines uh as a, an activist so to speak uh until this really came under attack so that's when we really started pushing back as hard as we could because we knew this policy was uh was crucial where the government landed was uh they took away that informal accommodation where the school would uh, support them the best they can they took out the language around uh genders uh students who are able to uh, participate on sports teams that they identify with and settled on language that was a little more vague most people didn't object to that but 
taking away those informal accommodations for students in unsupportive homes was really where people push back hard and uh, and rightly so, in my opinion. Hmm. Now, I'm looking here at Wikipedia and it says that the policy was enacted in 2020. Was that under the previous government or under the current one? <laughs> no, under the same government. And uh, there's a there's quite a history around this. So the former education minister uh, who has now left the government, not just the cabinet, not just the caucus, uh, uh, he's not, or well, not just the cabinet, I should say. He's still, he's not in the caucus anymore. He's still a member of the legislature, but uh, he left the party and the cabinet over this. Um, so uh, he would have been working with deputy ministers and education provincial uh, professionals in the education department in New Brunswick to implement this uh, a policy that supports. Uh, SOGI or sexual origin, orientation and gender identity or 2SLGBTQIA plus students and kept sending it to the premier's office. Blaine Higgs was elected in uh, 2018 as premier. Um, so, and this Mr. Dominic Cardi as his name would have come in with that government as a conservative and uh, mm -hmm. he's former actually NDP leader here in New Brunswick, but uh, jumped over to the conservatives and uh, very capable guy would have worked with the professionals and uh, brought this uh, policy to uh, the government and uh, just kept sending it over and no answer it didn't mm. come back. And the way this this works, I guess, with them is any of these policy changes they send over to the premier's office. The premier signs off on them and uh, if the premier's okay, they come back and they get approved. Well, this one just didn't come back for whatever reason. And uh, Mr. Cardi and the deputy minister uh, in question, George Daly, kept going into you know to the premier's office and saying, "What's the you know what's the latest on this?" And you know we have questions. I'm not sure about this. And eventually, in 2020, Mr. Cardi signed the policy and said, "This is you know I'm done waiting for Higgs to sign off on this. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to sign the policy." Uh, and Higgs did not like it. He uh, tore a strip off of Mr. Cardi uh, and brought it to his caucus. And caucus kind of shrugged and said, uh, "You know, we, Mr. Cardi's making some good arguments for this. I don't, I don't know why this would be a problem." So it, it passed, and it sat there for two years. Eventually, Mr. Cardi left the cabinet for, for other reasons. There was a. Uh, a controversy over French immersion in New Brunswick, which is uh, language mm -hmm. politics, is always a big deal in New Brunswick, where one third of the province uh, speaks French as their mother tongue. And uh, Mr. Higgs had uh, proposed to throw out the French immersion program that has been in place for over 40 years. That yeah. I myself in Canada is only officially bilingual province, right? Yeah. <laughs> I myself took the program. I just I I speak pretty good French as a result, uh, you know. 40 years later, 30 years later, whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I, I thought it was good. A lot of people support the program. And, uh, you know, there was a, a famous meeting where Higgs was, uh, and this was outlined by the deputy minister and subsequently Mr. Cardi as, uh, as the former minister where Higgs just said, I don't care what data you're showing me about the program. Data my ass was the big quote that people... It's become an infamous uh, phrase in New Brunswick where Higgs says, data my ass, you guys are going to say whatever you want because you like the program as it is and I want to get rid of it. I, and he is, Mr. Higgs has had a long history actually as part of a f splinter right-wing group mm -hmm. uh, in his youth, the core party uh, proposed getting mm -hmm. rid of French as mm -hmm. one of the official languages of the province and, and not no longer being then officially a bilingual province. So, the, and but, that was uh, Richard Hatfield that brought in the bilingualism, correct? Back in, in those days, yes. And it was mm -hmm. Luke Ray, Jay Robichaux and Richard Hatfield. And yeah. uh, there's a long, yeah, long, very interesting history about how that came to be in New Brunswick. But, uh, yeah, you know, long story short, official bilingualism is constantly entrenched and uh, it's a core value of most New Brunswickers. So, 
Anyways, Mr. Cardi subsequently left the cabinet and over this and uh, deputy ministers left like George Daly. And, uh, you know, all this stuff about policy 713 came out because they're no longer constrained. There's still some things that Mr. Cardi won't talk about and Mr. Daly won't talk about, but everything that's not part of cabinet confidentially came to light as, uh, you know, how Mr. Higgs thinks about this policy and uh, 2SLGBTQIA plus people in particular and uh, has never supported this policy or supported, uh, you know, frankly thought it wasn't necessary and tried to get rid of it. And, you know, the things he started talking about right away, and this is, uh, you know, he settled on this line about parental rights. And I think most people might have heard that or seen that in the paper. That's not what he said at first. What he said at first was, you know, the problem with this policy is that uh, it's affecting the sex ed curriculum and it's, you know, it's indoctrinating students and there's drag queens in the classrooms who are doing inappropriate things in front of students and children uh, are on sports teams that can't compete fairly because there's trans kids on there who are more, uh, you know, trans women are on teams with uh, cis women and they can't uh, compete against the mm. trans women. No complaints have ever been filed saying this in of any not. of the high school sports. I think there's 29 high school sports that the NBIAA oversees. No complaints ever received. So he's just pulling this stuff out of thin air, right? Uh, the thing that really angered me was when the education minister said that the policy needed to be reviewed because uh, we needed to see how uh, New Brunswickers felt about uh, their daughters being in the bathroom with trans people. If you can imagine in 2023, saying that out loud into a microphone on the air on CBC. It's just so, so ridiculous. <laughs> one of the most damaging tropes about to us LGBTQIA plus people in the world is that, you know, you're not safe with them in intimate situations. Mm -hmm. And this is just, you know, going right at that as hard as possible. We actually filed a human rights complaint uh, with the New Brunswick Human Rights Commission over those comments that they had made. Eventually they settled on this, uh, this notion of parental rights. That's something that's popular in the States. Uh, it's politically acceptable to most people. It doesn't create those kind of, outrageous uh you know cr tropes mm -hmm. that uh that uh he had uh, been speaking about and uh you know that's something that he could you know speak about and say over and over again in the newspaper without getting uh pilloried i guess so that's uh that's where it ended up uh by the middle of june there was a controversy with the government where they proposed uh the, the opposition had proposed uh, a motion to roll this back to the original policy 713, which restored those informal accommodations for people. And uh, through a little bit of language that they had uh, inserted into that, they agreed there was enough uh, support from Higgs's own government. People split with the party and some cabinet ministers subsequently left the government actually. Uh, to send this to the child and youth advocate in New Brunswick, who did a spectacular report. It's uh, almost 100 pages long, just where they collected evidence from uh, medical professionals, child psychologists, uh, New Brunswick Medical Society, legal scholars uh, from all the maritime law schools, uh, where they said, you know, changing these informal accommodations is a clear violation of both the child's charter rights, privacy rights, and under the, you know, violation of the New Brunswick Human Rights Act. So uh, all the information that the government needed to say, oh no, this was a big mistake. Nope, still did not <laughs> change it my ass basically. at all. Exactly, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, now uh higgs has doubled down this has a sort of happy ending from uh 
the perspective of the school districts. So the school districts in New Brunswick, there's seven of them, uh, refuse to enforce the policy changes. They said, of course, we're not going to. And there is language in the Education Act, a small clause that lets them override or the language is actually uh, enhance uh, or further develop a policy from the Education Department. So it has to build upon a uh, policy that's already in place from the Education Department to be legal. And uh, they use that clause to say, well, we're going to enhance what they roll back and restore the original policy. So even though Higgs passed this policy, all of the school districts refuse to enforce it. Uh, so, and that's where it stands right now. Uh, so it was to be in place for 2023, the beginning of the school year. They pushed uh, quite hard in the districts. The districts, to their credit, didn't crack. They got their own lawyers paid for by the province, if you can believe that, as ridiculous as that is. They have access to government-funded lawyers to fight the government uh, on this policy and took advantage of that. And their legal advice was, of course, you can't violate a child's human rights or have a policy that does that. So your your clauses are, are legal. And this is now, uh, been, there's a group called Equality New Brunswick. They're mounting a charter challenge against this. The Canadian Civil Liberties Association is also mounting a charter challenge against this. And of course, as we said, the districts are refusing to enforce this. So the government's been nowhere on this, uh, despite all of their efforts. Thank goodness all these professionals and advocates for children showed up to stick up for this small okay. minority of kids that uh, are being trampled over. Okay, my mind is blown right now, because right now with everything that you've said, there's like content for four different shows. Well, yes. We have, oh, yeah. first of all, the leader of the NDP jumping to the Conservatives. What yeah. the hell? Oh, How does that a, happen? It's a long story. Well, he's, and, uh, he's quite a guy. He's a great guy. Uh, he's a very smart uh, individual. He's uh, well uh, thought of in New Brunswick. And uh, I mean, New Brunswick's a small place, as you know. Uh, mm. it's, uh, the, it, it's not that uncommon to see folks jump around, I guess. But okay. uh, well, there is a big difference between the NDP and the Progressive Conservative Party in New Brunswick as opposed to uh, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and Alberta, where the NDP is effectively the Progressive Conservative Party of, you know, Joe Clark right. under the NDP banner, whereas down east, it's a different story. It's it's more in line with Ed Broadbent's NDP. Yeah, I think Mr. Cardi considers himself a centrist and ended up leaving the party, getting evicted almost from the party for being too centrist and not left wing yeah. enough. So instead of jumping over to the liberals, where I think he probably fits in better, in my opinion, um, but uh, he uh, found a home with the Tories as a progressive. And it's not you know, the capital C conservatives here in New Brunswick, we've always had no. a very progressive conservative party, you know, in the, the tradition of Joe Clark and uh, mm -hmm. uh, Red Tories are, are well known here. Oh, we've yes. never had this firebrand, hardcore Alberta conservatives here in, uh, in New Brunswick until lately. Okay. I, I've lived in New Brunswick. Okay. I have a lot of family in New Brunswick. My mother is from New Brunswick, from Miramichi. Okay. So I, I, I I understand. I get it. You know, I, I've lived in, in, in Miramichi. I've lived in uh, St. Margaret's. Uh, you know, I've spent almost every summer of my life there oh, okay. up until a certain age. So I, I get it. I've traveled throughout the province, lived in Newfoundland. Like, I get, you know, Maritimer and a Newfoundlander. Uh, but, but I've been in Ottawa for about 40 years now. But I, I do understand and when you say it is a small c conservative and it always has been in new brunswick it's always been a very progressive province it doesn't necessarily get the spotlight that it should get because you know what it's seven hundred thousand well it's, people, I think. it's increased lately it's up to eight hundred and was it forty thousand okay. now ish yeah so you're pushing pushing towards a million because yep. nova scotia crossed the million mark this past summer so exactly we'll see a million people there soon enough now we got to get you guys a cfl team <laughs> 
I know a lot of people who'd love that and who would drive to four hours Halifax to see a game oh, yeah. in a heartbeat. So, okay. okay. Well, Halifax or even Moncton looked at it for a little while yeah. because it it's got it's in centrally right. located exactly. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, I don't want to take us too okay. far off topic. topic but, so okay. So first we have the the former minister of education. Then we have the whole core movement for uh, viewers that are not watching was a party that was called Confederation of Regions that I believe was mm -hmm. dissolved. It was. They would have uh, imploded. Uh, you know, and there have been, there was another uh, party called the People's Alliance that was absorbed into Higgs's government by Higgs uh, in the past couple of years. They were a splinter party and it's the same not as ardently uh, anti-bilingualism as uh, the uh, core party was, but definitely blew the dog whistle of anti-French uh, rhetoric a lot and ended up with enough uh, support. You know, there is always that between five and 10%, let's say, who's mm -hmm. might be on the fringe, right? Who thinks, mm -hmm. you know, they can't get a good job because they don't speak French. And this is New Brunswick. You know, this is a look into New Brunswick politics. It, you know, you almost there's a subset of the public service where you have to be bilingual because you serve both French and English uh, constituents. And you know, some people have said, "Well, that's not fair. I don't speak French, so I, why should I be excluded?" Um, most French people, like eighty percent, speak English, right? So. Mm -hmm. You know, we expect the French people to learn English, but not the English but people to learn the other French. Way, yeah. I mean, it's it's a little it's a little hard to swallow for most people, but within that fringe, that's uh, mm -hmm. you know animates them well, for sure. It's been my experience too, and you might be able to uh, corroborate this that many of the folks go, "Well, I can't get a job in the government because I don't speak French." Yeah, but you're also not qualified. <laughs> yeah, forget about the French speaking part. Uh -oh. You don't have the education or the skill set to have that job. Well, so. The trope would be um, some people only get the job because they speak both languages yes, and yes, they yes. are not qualified. And more qualified English people are being passed over in favor of bilingual people. Just the, you know, anything you can think yeah. of, right? That's, and again, this is the fringe. This is not the mainstream, but it animated enough to bring core. Uh, to power in the late mm -hmm. 90s and uh, they even got to, seats a few seats they didn't they did. along the way they absolutely yeah. did yeah yeah uh, they were the official opposition at one point actually and uh, you know recently we did see that rear its head again with the people's alliance now Higgs you know doesn't have there's people say I won't even work with this people's alliance party because they are blowing that anti-French dog whistle. I don't want to be associated with them at all. But he will. Higgs didn't have that problem. He brought yeah. in those. There was two uh, um, members of the Legislative Assembly, or MLAs, as we call them in New Brunswick, who he brought in, and uh, that party dissolved as a result, including their leader, who became, who's now the public safety minister. Oh, my word. And there's a, yeah. if you look up Chris Austin, there's a, look up my manatee stories on Chris Austin. I, he, uh, he's a target of mine, uh, my satire, and uh, deservedly so in my view. But uh, you want to see, uh, <laughs> if you want to get to know Chris Austin, go to the manatee.net and, and search for him. And you'll see some satire about him. There's usually a kernel of truth and we build out from there. Of course. Oh, my so let, let, let's okay. revisit hold, something hold, hold here on. for a second, if we may. Uh, the um, the entire aspect of parental rights, uh, okay? okay, which is which is a crock of shit, to be quite honest with you. And here's why I want to revisit it. In the state of Ohio, recently, let me just put this on the screen. I'll read it out for the kids that are listening to the audio only version. The right went from concerns for trans, tr trans children to outright banning gender-affirming care for adults in, Ho in Ohio. It was never about protecting children. Of course. They don't want any trans people to exist. So this is the thing, right? So if you talk to Blaine Higgs, he would say, you know, and he thinks this is his winning line that a 
you know, he stumbled into after three or four weeks, we reviewed that of all this terrible uh, tropes that he promoted and then settled on the line of, you know, we need to support parents. Well, of course, everyone supports parents. No one is saying we don't support parents or we want to take rights away from parents mm -hmm. or anything like that. There was a survey done of trans youth in New Brunswick, or not New Brunswick, in Canada. Uh, I think it was in 2019, so recently, where they surveyed uh, youth, and it was almost a thousand uh, trans and gender diverse youth who responded. And they they asked them a number of questions, and you know what they found was about half of the trans youth came out to their parents, and their parents did not support them. Mm -hmm. um, they found 78% of the trans youth who came out to their parents, even if their parents supported them, they would not support uh, a gender affirming name for them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the whole, I guess the line that Higgs has been promoting as a defense to what he's done is that this is, infor and actually said teachers are hiding information from parents that students are hiding this information, teachers are hiding information from parents, and uh, the parents don't know that their child has gender dysphoria and uh, mm -hmm. wants to use a preferred name and pronoun. So since this is being hidden, you know, we can't allow that because parents are parents and parents need to support their children. So we need to tell, you know, these parents need to be informed so a, this child can't have that informal accommodation of, uh, using a preferred name if their parent doesn't sign off. And remember, that only happens, you know, they can only get that accommodation from a teacher, maybe. It's not going to be in Microsoft Teams or the team roster or their, you know, their bro call. It's only, you know, I can maybe get the teacher to call me this preferred name uh, mm -hmm. if, uh, if my parents won't support me. And that's what takes took away. So, uh, in any case, I guess, I guess, sorry, I forgot where I was going with this. That's okay. It's okay. Right. It happens. <laughs> no worries. I get so animated about this. So, understandable. Let, let me put the question to you this way. Uh, if they're talking about parental rights, clearly they're not talking about all parents because you're a parent. What of about course. your rights? Exactly. So, yes. of course, that's where I was going with this. Sorry. So with parental rights, of course, um, no one is saying that parents shouldn't be involved. And of course, parents should support their children be aware. And in a lot of cases, parents are aware and decline to support their children. And I know people like this through my own children uh, who will not support their child using a different name or using a different gender, or, you know, let the child cut their hair to uh or grow their hair as the case may be and uh you know uses all of their parental power so to speak to restrict that child's uh transition and of course doesn't support them you know getting gender affirming care either you know so what you know that survey found was these kids who uh uh, are not supported and uh, well all trans people in fact according to that survey two in uh, ten considered suicide and one in five attempted suicide uh sorry i think it was two in two in five considered suicide and one in ten attempted suicide sorry as uh is what that survey found so we're talking about life and death with these uh with these children so it's not academic it's not you know hiding information it's it's kids who are coming out most often and who aren't being supported and who are suffering and in some cases attempting suicide or committing suicide over it so mm -hmm. it's a life and death issue uh for a lot of uh, a lot of kids okay. and uh meanwhile what uh, and this again enrages me, <laughs> and I'll try to <laughs> try not to rant, but uh, oh, rant yeah. away, rant away. Cool. As, uh, as, uh, as uh, recently as you know, this past Christmas with the fundraising tax deadlines coming up, 
uh, Blaine Higgs was fundraising, sending out uh, fundraising letters to his party, um, asking for support over parental rights. And uh, there's actually a pledge of uh, parental support that he signed, uh, that he asked people to sign and send up to $3,000, which is the maximum for donations along to him so he can run for, you know, help pay for his reelection uh, coming up next year. So, you know, we're not talking about parental rights. We're talking about fundraising. We're talking about politics. We're talking about using children who are vulnerable um, as a political tool to gain support from folks who are being misinformed by him intentionally. And, you know, being placed in danger, being put my kids like my own who are getting, who are stressed out about going to school because of all this garbage that keeps getting spread around by the government, not just the fringe, which is what we usually have to worry about, but the actual premier, one of the, you know, people with the, one of the biggest platforms in Canada is spreading mm. lies intentionally about these trans kids and fundraising. Now, recently, and I, uh, this is what came out on Friday, we found out that Higgs has engaged these infamous individuals uh, internationally, who uh, one is named James Cantor, uh, who is Canadian actually, but testifies all over North America and the world against uh, gender affirming care for minors. Uh, and he has brought them in to speak to the government here in New Brunswick. And that is, you know, set off alarm bells for me, obviously, because, you know, Higgs had talked about gender affirming care for trans kids in the legislature while the education bill was being debated. And it's like, why is he talking about gender affirming care, health care for trans kids? in a debate over an education bill that, you know, because it's not just, a, it's not about the education bill, of course, right, is the answer. But, you know, that set off an alarm for me is like, Higgs is not only looking at uh, their education, he's also started to look into their health care. And what, again, what we found out last week is as he's had some of these discredited infamous uh, individuals who testify in anti-trans cases all over North America and the world come and present to members of his government. He, they won't say who they presented to, whether it was cabinet or caucus or the health department or whoever. But, you know, these are people who, uh, whose expertise has, you know, expertise has been mm. used to deny healthcare to trans uh, people. And if that happened to my child, of course, that would be devastating to have their gender affirming care taken away um, until they were 18. My child just turned 15 uh, late last year and uh, has just started down the road. This is another thing that he said last week is that 60% of these children within their first medical appointment get a prescription for hormones nothing could be further from the truth i don't know how long it takes you guys to see a specialist but it can be up to two years here in new brunswick so from the first appointment you go to see your family doctor and say you know i think i'm trans i'd like to see a specialist from that starting point it's two to three years to get in to see that endocrinologist who can help you so yeah. it's not, you know, nothing automatic and that endocrinologist won't talk to you until you've had psychological counseling and can demonstrate mm -hmm. that. And they talk to the counselor. It's not, you know, anything that's automatic by any means. It is a very long, slow and careful process where, you know, the welfare of the child and the parents are involved throughout. However, now this is obviously being politicized by Higgs. And, uh, you know, is this intentional? Is this just spreading, again, fear, uncertainty, and doubt to promote his uh, political reelection? 
or is this laying the found uh, foundation to take away health care from trans kids which he can do another thing that happened in, in, while all this commotion was uh going on in the legislature uh last last year and all the 713 uh uh, policies were de being debated in the legislature is there was a change to take away uh to there is a uh, the, right now there's two medical corporations in new brunswick horizon and vitality one's french one's english they both reported to elected health boards until last year and uh and the health boards updated the government on how the hospitals were run uh the argument Premier Hicks made was those uh, hospitals, our health care is not performing the way it needs to because those hospitals and health corporations are accountable to the health boards and not to him. So that tied his hands. He couldn't get that kind of uh, uh, interference or uh, administration, depending on your point of view, of the hospitals mm -hmm. that he needed to get those efficiencies. So Hicks abolished the, and change the Health Act in Brunswick to abolish those elected health boards and make the health corporations report to the minister and him directly. So effectively, if Higgs wanted to take away gender-affirming care from trans children, he is completely legally able to now. He can send a directive a to the hospitals and say, stop giving gender affirming care to minors and they would have to stop and we would have to fight them in court to restore it. And I wouldn't say it's an automatic, you know, sometimes courts don't go the way. I, I think it's a pretty clear cut case. They'd have to restore it. But in the meantime, think of all the trans kids who would be stranded without health care. Um, undoubtedly, some would take their lives, no question, if they couldn't have their gender affirming care. Uh, I have no doubt. Uh, I don't think most people have any doubt that that would happen. Uh, but uh, why else would these uh, experts who uh, testify in cases around the world uh, for denying gender affirming care be presenting to government? It's not just about the education system and policy 713. So um, we're in a position now where we say, okay, he's telling lies about gender affirming health care or being so careless uh, that he's misrepresenting it. You know, that would be the most charitable way, I think, to put it is maybe he's just wrong and doesn't know it. In any case, he uh, he's being careless uh, and I, I think it warrants another uh, human rights complaint, to be honest. And, and that's something I'm going to be looking at this week is uh, following another uh, complaint with the Human Rights Commission over him spreading uh, transphobic information about uh, trans health care in New Brunswick. Now, when we're talking, quote unquote, experts, I think we, we read it into the show last Friday. We're talking about people who have never treated or dealt with transgender healthcare at right. all, but they're somehow brought in as experts on the matter. Yeah, I think you know what what people have said is these people need uh, to deny healthcare. You need to present some sort of credentialed person, and if you have a PhD, even though you're not a medical doctor like James Cantor does, uh, the clinic he used to work at were you know, was shut down because it didn't uh, it didn't it uh, wasn't shown to be effective in in a, uh, treating anything so they shut it down uh, where you know they had talked about gender dysphoria and uh, 2s lgbtqia uh, children and eventually it just they shut it down and i think it was in toronto it was in ontario that uh you know and no longer was he able to practice as uh, as a psychologist and now I think he makes his living, you know, testifying in these trials uh, for people who are interested in denying care to uh, to trans children. 
So uh, recently, I, you mentioned Ohio. We know he's testified in Tennessee and Florida as well. So uh, it's definitely sending off alarm bells uh, for us here in New Brunswick. You know, and this is, I would say, a bigger deal than Policy 713 because even though, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, my child was completely supported by us. Uh, you still I, wouldn't be able to get the care. child is. Right. I mean, if we, we would have to literally yeah. move to go where we could or set up an appointment or find another doctor at a province to, you know, continue uh, my child's gender affirming care, which, and, and so would every other New Brunswicker. So that who is a trans New Brunswicker who receives gender affirming care, uh, who's under the age of majority. So uh, it, it is a big deal. And it's uh, very worrisome to hear that Higgs is lining up these widely discredited uh, experts to uh, mm. testify to government. And uh, yeah, I think what his aim is, is to provide, uh, provide enough of a foundation that his caucus has enough cover to say, well, we heard from experts and you know we have a lot of questions so it's safer to just put a hold on this and so so all of a sudden when it comes to canter it's not data my ass right mm, yeah 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 how con like the expert who wrote that well like the expert who wrote that vaccines cause autism right that well, expert one of those are, guys like a complete what like i said just google the guy and you can you can get the story on him i won't uh I don't have to spread it around. He's been widely discredited no. uh, by many, and uh, his views and his background and his credentials are, are have been widely uh, discredited on this topic. So uh, I don't have to I don't have to do the the work myself. If you're interested, Google him, and, and it's very easy to find. So, but you know, in for some reason, New Brunswick, he's found a safe place. Uh, he's found a receptive audience. And I, we all know the reason. It's because of Premier Higgs. Okay. Now, when we're talking yeah. about this as well, we've got these experts who are not experts, especially in this field. But one of the ways this issue came to our attention was the claim at the beginning when he decided that he was going to revise policy 713, which wasn't perfect in the first place, as you were mentioning, because it was already seeking permission for children who were under 16 to start with in its original form saying that they had received about 150 letters from parents complaining about this and then there was a freedom of information request and then that turned out to be three letters one of them three. which apparently was talking about litter boxes and then don't get me started and, and then apparently there were no letters at all later on that we found so it was like what they just like sat down and wrote three when the foia request came in themselves or had three friends write something. like what what the hell so it's important to remember this policy is for you know, it concerns to us LGBTQIA plus students and supporting them, but also the parents of to us LGBTQIA plus students. Um, mm -hmm. No documented evidence has ever been demonstrated. Uh, any complaint from any parent of a to us LGBTQIA plus student in New Brunswick complaining about policy 713. And there have been uh, extensive uh, requests of the education department for months to produce this evidence where they said uh, hundreds and hundreds of complaints were received. And it wasn't just 150. The education minister who replaced Cardi says hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of emails received. And uh, I clipped that onto my TikTok. If people want to search for my TikTok, I have some of the, the video from the legislature where he makes these claims clipped. And then uh, the request information uh, requests go in. Say, well, let's see these hundred of complaints. So, like, we didn't even know there were that many parents of trans kids for their right. hundreds. Um, yeah. Nothing. They came up with nothing. The ones that they provided to the child and youth advocate uh, for their report 
are ludicrous. They are just the, you know, they talk about uh, the litter boxes in the schools, of which there are none, of course. Um, they talk about uh, religious instruction in schools and how that's correct, which of, of course is ludicrous. They are just the, the least credible things that an uh, external observer could read and base something on. But he just needed that crumb, right, to, uh, to justify why he was doing mm -hmm. this. Of course. And then, you know, the folks who want to believe him will believe him. And uh, he has doubled down for some reason he's backed off on things like french immersion and uh mm -hmm. other changes he wanted to make but for this he is holding on with both hands and i think it's because it's generating political support for him and and donations that he badly needs so, because he has been low in the poll for two years now you know, among wow, the lowest yeah. in canada you, you know where the whole the whole litter box thing you know where that comes from the rumor was it was for kids who wanted to be furries. Oh, yeah, no, definitely. That was never the I case. definitely know that, yeah. And so this is what, you yeah. know, there was another infamous letter who has uh, circulated uh, that uh, a constituent forwarded to a cabinet minister here in New Brunswick saying there is 100% definitely litter boxes in schools and I can prove it. And that letter was forwarded directly to the premier by this cabinet minister saying, I 100% believe, believe this constituent who tells me this. She is very credible. Of course, it was of course none of it, ha none of it happened. No, no. It was all ridiculous. It was immediately discredited. And the fact that it was taken seriously at all by this cabinet minister was, uh, was the thing that ended up gaining attention. But again, here we are just combating these ridiculous tropes that you think in 2023 and 2024 would just be dismissed out of hand. But unfortunately, they found a home within the Higgs government. Well, there were schools in the United States that actually uh, do have litter boxes in the classroom, but not for kids who think they're furries. It's for when they have a shooter lockdown drill or there's an active shooter in the building when they lock everything down. Of course, what happens to children? They get frightened and they need to use wow. a toilet. Well, they don't have one. So they put litter boxes in classrooms because of active shooters. I didn't know that. That's where that came from. And somebody said it's because they want to be furries. No, that's not the case. And again, in New Brunswick, there's absolutely no documented case of that whatsoever. No, none. But that's where, that's where it started. It was, they had litter boxes in classrooms, but it was not for children who thought they were cats or dogs. That was never the case. It was for a place to relieve oneself in an active shooter. Well, a minimum of dignity yeah. in a situation that's yeah. horrible. I, I'm, Wow. Yes. Exactly. Somebody said they saw a yeah. litter at a school and they used it to spread in the driveway to put on the ice. I yeah. mean, because yeah, it's a, yeah. and here we go. You know, all of a sudden it's spun into this wild tale that, you know, strains credibility on the best day, but, you know, somehow this, uh, this has found a home uh, as credible information within the Higgs government. These are the, the, the Pizzagate group of folks, right? Who, who just seem to want to believe the most outlandish things and they run with it and now it, it gets written into policy. It's like, yeah, so here we are now. We're on the lookout for why are all these discredited experts presenting to government and why is he spreading these lies about trans health care? Uh, and, you know, again, having made all these changes to the education system or tried to and still accomplished a, a minimum, minimum subset of what he intended, you know, why are now all these purported experts in, in trans healthcare presenting to government? What's that agenda? And, you know, mm -hmm. is he laying the foundation for the notwithstanding clause be used like Mo did in Saskatchewan? Is, uh, you know, is he setting the table to take away the trans healthcare? We don't know. Um, we do know, you know, these are people who, under any credible, uh, critical eye, would not be in any government presenting any information and who have been widely discredited yeah. uh, across the world. So as not being experts in the thing they purport to have expertise in. So 
again, it's it's very concerning, and it's it's got our attention now. And like I said, this I think would be devastating if if we did take away these uh, these uh, the healthcare from trans children. It would definitely cost lives. You know, kids would die. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It would decimate families in the process. Absolutely. And and this has already divided families, uh, existence, because, you know, you start blowing these dog whistles, ramping up this misinformation. And, you know, people have told me, you know, I'm kind of, I was kind of okay with this. Now my kid definitely can't come out because, you know, my spouse believes what Higgs is saying, or my parents who, you know, might be boomers. Mm-hmm. Uh, believe what Higgs is saying, right? And those folks grew up in a different time. That's you know, and they don't really understand trans people. And and now folks are being, you know, Higgs has gone to them. And again, these aren't parents of trans children. These are just voters that Higgs has gone to say something bad is happening in school, and I need you to support me because these irresponsible parents of trans kids are letting this happen to their children, and they shouldn't be. Which, you know, again, it's not about the kids. It's not about the parents like me. It's about politics Mm -hmm. and transphobia. How successful is this gambit so far that you can tell? Well, it's successful enough that, you know, Higgs claims, and uh, again, this is confidential, uh, and there is uh, someone who has signed up supporters for the premier named Fatine Grzeski, mm-hmm. who some some of you might know. She's mm-hmm. a you know a Christian, mm-hmm. you know, she has a background in the Christian nationalist movement in Canada. Uh you know, through her efforts and others, uh claims to have uh, signed up three thousand supporters for Higgs because Higgs party actually rebelled the progressive conservative, the progressives, the red Tories rebelled Mm -hmm. against Higgs and said, we want you to resign people who I know my whole life who have uh, been Tories, lifelong Tories said, uh, we want you to resign. You need to retire. uh, And we're leaving the party if you don't uh, and started the, you know, the complicated review process to try to eject him as leader of the party, uh, those you know, they came very close, but those uh, requirements ultimately failed. They weren't met to uh, to put him under review. Rumor is it was just by one riding president, one riding president short of the level uh, to uh, put him under review. But again, mm-hmm. Higgs and Fatine and others claim to have signed up. You know, three thousand new members to come to his defense if if he did get put under review. So, you know, is that true? I don't know. I signed up to vote against him, I, but uh, it's it's definitely possible that there was many hundreds who signed up to support him based on the misinformation they've been told. I don't know. So uh, it has it has taken hold, and uh, it is being promoted actively by Higgs and others in in his government. So uh, it's it hasn't gone away. It's only gotten worse, in my view. Oh my! This is not good. This is not good at all. Fatine is the furthest thing from a Christian to begin with. I mean, if Jesus Christ came down right now, she'd be the first one being outcast amongst you know the entire Republican Party and uh, most of the uh, Conservative Party of Canada. Yeah. There's a podcast that I uh, listen to and participate in here in New Brunswick, and uh, these people actually had a background in uh, charisma- charismatic Christianity and had met Fatine in her old life and knew her when she mm-hmm. was trying to run federally and you know told stories and... Uh, she actually had her lawyer reach out to the podcast to get them to delete those episodes, or they would have been, uh, they would have uh, suffered legal consequences from her. Um, so, oh, uh, our network's familiar with yeah, that. Slap suit. It's a hundred percent. That's it. That's what it was. So, uh, yeah, she's uh, very carefully managing her image, but, uh, I tweeted last night about uh, a book that uh, she was featured in where it talks about how she spent, you know, I talked about what I was doing in 2008 when she was uh, screaming into a microphone on uh, 
Parliament Hill talking about uh, erasing the line between church and state. So, uh, you know, it's quite a quite a difference. I was raising my family here in New Brunswick and and doing my work work a day life, and uh, she was in Parliament Hill lobbying. Uh, uh, against abortion rights and against gay marriage and and all sorts of things. So she is she has a long history. The book on her is well known. Like I said, I think she's very aggressively trying to manage that past now mm -hmm. because she is running in the provincial election that's upcoming this October or sooner. It might be this spring. Um, but she's she's running as a candidate who is. Uh, you know, there's a lot of rumors how she became acclaimed that she had pushed uh, pushed out some of the or worked with Higgs and and uh, other organizers for the premier to push out other candidates who didn't support Higgs, uh, and now she was acclaimed uh, just uh, before Christmas. So she's uh, she's moving forward uh, as as quickly and as aggressively as she can to become an MLA, which is absolutely what we don't need of course with no this uh, politicization of these issues by higgs no well the internet is forever yes. yeah thankfully yeah and there's a lot of tape on her you know speaking into a microphone against trans people in the past it, it's not hard to find so uh if people want to know the book on fateen it's there uh, again they just have to want to hear the information if you're somebody who agrees with with them who's on that fringe or who just generally supports SIGs, maybe maybe you turn a blind eye or hold your nose and and that's really what i think we have to fight against she can't we can't let that just go unanswered she in fateen actually has run a website called don't delete parents again this whole trope that uh parents are are being left out of this when of course they never are under any version of the policy have never been left out but she runs a website called don't delete parents and the website says that parents are being left out and and uh, these radicals are trying to exclude parents from their children's life and of course nothing could be further from the truth that's uh that's a farce and uh, but uh you know it's uh it uh, signs people up for the party and it raises funds for the party and for her. She still uh, uh, runs a, a channel that's supported by donations. So she's making money off of this. The party is making money off of this. Meanwhile, the kids are, are putting the crosshairs. Oh, man, man, man. Um, talking about kids in the crosshairs, um, you mentioned earlier about kids that had considered suicide and that have attempted it. Um, I have the additional concern of um, when it comes to homeless youth and statistics that I've seen, there's no firm statistics, but the best estimation is that about 40% of homeless street youth identify as rainbow. Right. And if you mentioned that there's about 78% of parents that weren't supporting things like even a name change, yes. and those kids, let's say, get kicked out and end up on the street, there's more than a risk of suicide. There's risk of trafficking. There's risk of doing what you need to do to survive, which often leads to selling yourself which can lead to addictions which could lead um is this being brought up is this being talked about in any way shape or form no that's you know again the takes would say this is why parents need to be involved because you know and meanwhile these kids again that survey i mentioned from 2019 uh 75 of family uh, stop speaking to that person. Uh, Seven percent threatened with violence. Six percent, uh, their what experienced violence. Seven percent kicked out of the house. Uh, so this is it's very and that's just for the trans statistics. And it's worse for um, people who are you know racialized. You know it's it's mm -hmm. uh, if you're from a community where this is less acceptable then you know, uh, other communities, then, uh, you know, it's definitely, 
you know, the statistics show and the survey shows that it's more prevalent in, in, uh, for those children. So it's definitely a problem, uh, you know, with the unhoused. I haven't seen the statistics you mentioned, but uh, it's definitely, we know with trans kids and gender diverse kids in particular, it is a problem for sure. Okay. According to them, this is them telling a survey. This is, you know, a statistically accurate survey. This is what happens to me. So it's not like people are making this up. This is according to the kids themselves. Okay. Now the, the other avenue talked about in this is that schools are hiding information or keeping things secret. And it's a point that I've made on the show. It's, this seems to be, especially from a cons government that identifies as conservative, which is supposed to be about getting government out of your life, this seems like the state appropriating information that does not belong to them. Some of the most private personal information that can belong to a person, their gender identity, their sexual like this, making it theirs and then doing what they will with it. So I'm looking at this as that schools are not keeping things secret. School boards are recognizing that this is information that does not belong to them and therefore are not touching it. So you're not, it's you're, this information does not belong to you to either share or keep secret. 100%. One way or the other. Exactly. And Higgs actually said on September 20th, you probably remember the big nationwide protest against the anti-trans mm. rally that wasn't supposed to be anti-trans, but, you know, I never saw yeah, so many anti-trans messages in my life uh, as the ones I got that day. Um, yeah, Higgs said on the lawn of the legislature in front of TV cameras that teachers were hiding information. Um Wow. I mean, imagine being a teacher hearing the premier accuse you of hiding information from their parents, stakeholders that, uh, that, you know, you're right. It doesn't belong to the school. It's the student's information. It's up to the students. You know, I said on uh, some of my tweets, it's not up to the government to give permission for kids to be gay. You don't, you know, if the school finds out, it's okay. I mean, even in the existing policy 713, if you want to be part of a GSA, that's not disclosed either to parents, uh, even in Higgs's version. So there is acknowledgement of these principles that that's private information to the child. And if we have to, you know, if we have to boil this down to parental rights, let's talk about children's rights. What are the child's rights? If right. that child has capacity uh, to say, and, you know, an older child would, you know, 10, 10 or older, you know, let's say, to say, you know, I think, you know, I think I might be trans or I think I might be non-binary. Uh, that's, you know, that's the child's information and if they tell that to the parents if it if the child doesn't tell that to the parents you have to say why why doesn't that child feel safe telling the parents and you, if you ask that child it'd say i know you know i kind of <laughs> i know my parents better than anyone right uh, if i tell them i'm trans it's not going to go well so i think i'll just keep that to myself and that staying in the closet uh, is what causes that suffering with with uh, uh, gender dysphoria, you know, as that uh, keeping oh. that secret and uh, you know having to to live a lie and every day be misgendered. That just really takes a toll, you know. As that child gets older and goes through puberty, and their body becomes something that you know is they just feel is wrong. Yeah, on every level and they every time they look in the mirror they say that's not me i'm you know this is wrong i i feel uh awful about what i'm seeing in the mirror every time i look at it those kids you know that's what causes the depression and the uh the suicidal tendencies and if they're at school and they're being misgendered in every interaction that what that uh that happens every day you know, over time, they're just going to start, you know, shutting. And I, we see this with kids here in New Brunswick. I'm sure it's with kids everywhere. They just start, you know, maybe they don't go to school. Maybe they, you know, 
go drinking with their friends instead because uh, if they have friends, maybe they're socially isolated. Uh, you know, maybe they smoke drugs instead. Maybe they run away from home. Uh, you know, they're definitely not going to be a successful, healthy, happy student, which is what the education department's no. job is, right? Is to make sure these kids right. come at the other side as uh, successful adults. And uh, that's not what we're seeing, of course, in, uh, in that case. Is there, I mean, I know that there's some action, but the school boards have resisted up until now among the public, is there any action? Is there any movement to sort of bring this to attention, to counter this, to make this an issue? Are, are there people organizing? Absolutely, there are people organizing. I think the general public, again, we have to be careful about giving this power to the general public because the general public, you know, a lot of them, you know, you don't, human rights aren't something we run a poll on and say, okay, most people are okay with you having rights. Right. So you can have rights. You have them or you don't. So right. the kids have rights. The reason Higgs has appealed to the public, and especially people who are, you know, might be of an age where uh, this wasn't common and who don't understand it, or people who are actively transphobic or who have religious beliefs against this, Higgs has brought them all into the conversation to say, you need to have a say on the school policy. You know, keep in mind, they don't do this on every other school policy. They don't do this on the healthy food policy. They don't do this on the policy where students with AIDS, they don't do this on uh, the hockey team and say, everyone has to be okay with all the hockey team rules. Uh, but with trans kids, it's okay. Higgs has brought all these people in to comment on it because he was under attack by folks who were pushing back on him. So, I mean, yeah, there are folks who uh, who aren't sure about this. And, you know, this is where you have to have that grown-up conversation with people to say, here's what, you know, I know you might not know any trans people or think you don't know them. But this is what, mm. you know, this is what trans people are. They're not this trope that you learned 40 years ago uh, mm. in the back of the convenience store smoking with your friends. They, you know, there's a community out there. There are core truths about these people that if you want to participate in this conversation, you need to understand. Uh, and But, of course, what Higgs is doing is exploiting that ignorance for his political benefit. Of course he is. You know, it's something you said earlier that that uh, makes one wonder when when Higgs went on about how they get the treatment immediately. I'm like, it's not. That's no. The psychological treatment is the very first thing. A lot of counseling before a single drug is administered. Yeah. So, and it's not know, like walking into the pharmacy and saying, "Give me some hormones." It doesn't work that way. This is exactly how he made it sound. And if you know, I don't want to share too much of my child's private information, but you know, you start with a general practitioner. You get that re mm -hmm. referral to specialist. You get uh, get counseling, and if you have if you haven't had counseling, that's the first thing the specialist will tell you is, you know, I need to, you know, you need to have a psychological assessment by a professional mm -hmm. before we talk about these things. And then I want to talk to that professional. And then, you know, and like my kid has been going uh, to the gender affirming clinic. Again, it took two to three years to get into it. And they're you know, in their second year uh, there, they still, you know, they haven't received any any uh, uh, hormone treatment yet. They're still going through the process. It's a long and very mm. careful process yes. to get a, give a child gender affirming care. It's definitely not the slipshod, uh, careless process that uh, Higgs has promoted to the public. And it's no different for adults either. No, it's, it's the not. same process. Exactly. Exactly. And again, they're acting like trans people don't exist. Like this is just something that, you know, I hear a lot. This is something that's popular on social media and kids just think this, but it's not true. I mean, there's trans people all over the world. I mean, you guys are the same age as me. How often did you hear that said about uh, gay and lesbian people oh, yeah. when we were kids, right? Yep. Like they said, oh, this will go away. They're not mm -hmm. really gay. They're ju they just, just think they're gay. Exactly, right? And now it's the same thing with these trans kids. Uh, 
Oh, it's just a phase, you know, they're just... It's they been just, a lifelong oh. phase here. So. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, it's not just if it people exist, they exist. And you still have to argue that basic fact with some people because of all the inf misinformation that's out there. Because that keeps on reminding I mean, me of that show Soap, where the Billy Crystal's character says, "Oh, I'm no longer a practicing homosexual. I'm like, I, I got it down by now." <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> well, I mean, it, you know, to say it's a phase, it's, Mr. Beaver could look at me and say, "Oh, uh, Paul, you being a cis het man, that's just a phase, right?" Oh, <laughs> like it's it's, it's it's not how yes, it works. You just no. haven't met, met the right man yet. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but this is, these are the arguments they make. And, you know, of course, in the absence of any other argument being made, you know, it resonates with these people who it, they might have just put this on the back burner in their mind because, you know, there has been legislation that's legalized marriage for same sex couples, for example. And, you know, some of that, they don't have to think about that anymore because it's not in the news. And all of a sudden, uh, Higgs comes along and stirs up all these feelings that have been sitting there and they haven't thought about in a while and no one talked them out of it no one made that argument that uh, that uh, this wasn't right it's so these biases are still there and uh, mm -hmm. and they're being mined by uh, by the foes of trans people and and uh, cynical political actors for political support and funding so well, it makes me think of, okay, go, no, ahead, no, go, go ahead, go ahead, Mr. Beaver. Please. Please. I was just going to say, it makes me think of, so it's an anecdotal statement I'm about to, to, to lay down on you here, but it, I, I, I think what we're going to see over the course of time as people become emboldened by the uh, dangerous rhetoric and, and people are becoming emboldened on the other side of the rhetoric that Higgs is launching. They're like, you're going to harm people and, and you're going to have folks who have been, you know, in their mind, they're trans and have been their entire lives and kept it in the closet and they're 100%. going to explode. And, and, and here's where I'm going with this years ago when, um, during the presidential election, when George W was first running, and you know how they do the New Hampshire primaries and they go down to the diner and they interview people and they, and, and it was, I'll say it was Bob Dole. I can't remember if it was Bob Dole, uh, was, was there meeting people. And there was a, an, a gentleman who was in his seventies and he sat down and talked with Bob Dole and they had a back and forth and, and he said, Dole, well, how are you on same sex marriage? He goes, no, I'm against it. Oh, marriage is between a man and a woman. He says, we're done. And then the interviewer went, what? You know, here's this 70 year old farmer who's retired for the most part, you know, in New Hampshire. And he's like, well, why, 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 why did you say that? He goes, because I'm a gay man. And he just denied my right to love. And I was like, and the, the interviewer was like, <laughs> floored. But it was because he'd been pushed so far by so many people for so long that he just had it and exploded. And, and it was, it was uh, revelatory for everybody in the diner that day. Like, you mean this crusty old farmer over here is gay? Yeah, guess what? They exist. Everywhere. Trans people. Every exist. walk of life. Everywhere. Yeah. Always across have. the world. And it doesn't take long to find a trans person if you really want to. About 1%, half percent, 1% of the population is trans, according to some of the estimates I've seen. They're everywhere. Everywhere there's mm -hmm. trans people. It doesn't take long to find them. And go talk to them if you're one of these people who is really worried if you're really worried enough that you're going to sit on twitter and rant about this all day long go talk to a trans person and and just mm -hmm. test your views with them because it won't take long to uh dispel some of the myths that you've built your point of view around if you actually talk to a person who identifies mm -hmm. as trans instead of just taking you know, a political actor who's manipulating you clearly, their word for it. I mean, in any case, like I said, it, these are biases that I think we, we didn't deal with. Uh, they just got to sort of put on the back burner and, uh, and uh, they're given new life uh, by this debate here in New Brunswick, unfortunately. With the election, well, it all leads back. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. With the election coming up, um, are there any parties or any politicians who are standing up, who are acting as allies, who are who are fighting this as well? 
Yeah, we have. Uh, there is an NDP party. It's uh, you know it's in rough shape these days. There there is a leader, and uh, they're planning to run candidates in the upcoming election. Um, they're on the left of the political spectrum here. There is a Green Party, which is a uh, little in, in better health, I would say. They have three elected MLAs. They're very supportive of uh, of trans people and uh, uh, and have stood against the government since this issue came up. Uh, the major force here, uh, we do have a provincial Liberal Party, and they have done the most substantial work standing up for for trans kids and uh, the leader Susan Holt is running about neck and neck with Higgs right now in the polls. Uh, so it's, you know, I heard you say there's possibility of a government, you know, flipping here. Fingers crossed, right? But we right. don't know. It's uh, every poll says, yeah, every person I talk to is like, mm, I am done with Higgs. That guy is for any number of reasons, not just this, but a lot of different reasons uh you know there's uh, the unhoused uh the health care the education system apart from policy 713 there's all sorts of uh issues uh but guys i'm not sure how how close you follow our news our provincial no. government is i mean here in new brunswick but is uh our provincial government in the past three years has banked 2.2 billion in surpluses. Again, for a small province, that's a huge surplus. That's a lot. Of money. That's a lot. Meanwhile, we have an education system that is testing amongst the lowest in the country. We have unmet need in the healthcare system where people don't have physicians. Uh, people over Christmas, there was uh, one waiting ER room in, in Fredericton that was at 360 percent capacity oh my word. and yeah. one of the er doctors said you know took to facebook and said don't come here unless you're you yeah. know you're dying unless you're going to lose do a limb come. or your life do not come we have no room meanwhile you know the government is sitting on literally billions of of uh and spent dollars. They, you know, some of this has gone to uh, reduce the debt. And uh, some people say, well, that's a good thing. It's like, yeah, it is a good thing, but people are dying. We're at the mm -hmm. bottom in schooling. You know, that money is there to be spent, it's not there to go to bankers. So, yeah. you know, if uh, people you said 2.2 billion, 2.2 billion over the past three years. Yeah. And just one, that's billion. an astonishing amount of money for the province of New Brunswick. It is it's an astonishing it's amount. Right. And, and it's not even an amount of money we can really sort of grasp or 2.2 billion. The difference between 1 million seconds and 1 billion seconds, 1 million seconds is I think six days or eight days. A billion seconds is 32 years. Right. So, so when you put that into monetary figures, it is an astronomical amount of money, exactly. especially in a province that's not even a million people. Like, my goodness. Right. That needs to be going directly into healthcare and education. Well, this is, it's not like everything's fine <laughs> and we're sitting yeah. on this money and say, okay, well, let's put that towards the debt. Things are the worst they've ever been. And mm -hmm. Higgs is underfunding them deliberately because his belief as a physical conservative is you can't just throw money at problems. There's always going to be more. People are always going to want more. However, you know, you can't just throw money at things. It's like, well, if you're at the last place, throw a little money. <laughs> Maybe throw half of that at it and see what happens. I don't know. I'm just spitballing here. I'm not, I'm not there, but uh, it's just an idea. Spend some of that money and see if it gets better. I don't know. Try something. He just seems to be like a horrible human being all around. I'm this sorry. is like this is the most I'm trying to give both sides. This is you know, but this is uh, what folks are saying about him here. Is there is a lot of unmet need right now, and uh, it doesn't take long sitting on Twitter watching people talk about Higgs to for folks to criticize him. Um, there's a uh, there's a lot of you know last. Uh, over the weekend, actually, there was an unhoused person who was trying to stay warm. Uh, there's unhoused is, uh, people, the worst it's ever been in uh, New Brunswick, mm -hmm. uh, especially with the cost of living and the housing situation. We have had uh, 
you know, housing is is a, a, a more prized commodity here in New Brunswick than mm-hmm. it's been in quite a while. Uh, and there's a lot of unhoused people. And uh, a man uh, who's just trying to keep warm, you know, burned to death over the weekend. He uh, yeah. had some propane going and uh, he had himself on fire and uh, and he died. And uh, a few weeks ago before Christmas, um, there was a man who was out living outside and, you know, he'd been doing some drugs, uh, had a heart attack. And, you know, there's, there's people dying outside uh, who are, who are experiencing issues. They have no place to go uh, while we're sitting on literally billions of dollars. Um, yeah. And you've got the, the, the group of people who go, well, he shouldn't have been doing drugs. He died and it's his own fault. It's like, why don't you try living one day of his life and tell me you wouldn't be using drugs to try and get through the day too. It, it doesn't even matter. You know, people, you're right. People say that, you know, if he had a place to go, we, we need to, as a province, as a society, have social supports for people experiencing homelessness, period. We can't have people dying outside in the winter in New Brunswick. There's no, we're just, we've lost as a society if that happens. Exactly. When that, and it does happen often. We have failed as a society. Whether we have failed, you know, a billion dollar surplus or a billion dollar deficit, we can't let that happen here in New Brunswick. That cannot happen. That shouldn't happen anywhere in Canada. Anywhere. As we keep no. on saying, kids, our premiers are the problem. Yep. Definitely. They really definitely are. Definitely here. Sean, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. Yeah, it's been a lot to take in, but uh, my goodness gracious, you've you've been so uh, kind and generous with your time, which we really thank and you. It's so for, eloquent, uh, helping, eloquent, and helping to enlighten uh, both ourselves and and our listeners and viewers. So thank you for that and oh, substance we, so much substance oh, we'd love Lord. to have you back some other time too yes, if, please. If you'd sure be with that. i'd love to come back thank you for the opportunity like i said i'm trying to spread the word far and wide about uh, what's happening here in new brunswick it's you know, as i said it's very concerning uh, mm-hmm. and uh, it's not on the it's not on the right path it seems to be getting worse not better well, if there are any developments like this, or if there's you know something that comes up at one point, you have something to say, please reach out to us. You have a home here. Uh, like oh, I said, we you. are going to um, pay a lot of attention to New Brunswick. Uh, we're going to try to get as many people from the province as we can on the show uh, to talk about issues. We've reached out to Gail Costello as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, Gail's great. Love Gail. She, yeah. she knows uh, twice as much as me about this, so she would be a great guest to have. Yeah, we're just uh, having something trouble something. getting our, our schedules to coordinate. But, uh, you know, and if you have any recommendations uh, for people that we uh, we should have on, please. Um, Drop us a line. Yeah, especially sure. especially if the election happens to come early, because that wouldn't surprise me. If he feels that the, the rug has been pulled out of under him, he might just go early to have less time for people to become aware. That seems to be a, a strategy yeah, as I'd well. Yeah, I'd say even money. Uh, it's going to happen. It's fifty-fifty uh, right now. It's going to happen in the spring. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, and as more and more people who, and uh, you, well, let's try and form a sentence here, Paul. As more and more parents across the province of New Brunswick who have children who are either uh, gay or, or queer or trans or bi or whatever the case may be, are looking at what's happening to trans children, and they go, "My child could be next." 100 percent right exactly yeah there was a survey actually and i haven't uh, i haven't looked into it but someone brought it to my attention uh last week it was done by the new brunswick health council and it was of the student population here in new brunswick between grades 6 and 12 and 21 of them 21 percent of them uh identified as 2s lgbtqia plus yep. you know not necessarily trans but yep. you know right. but rainbow and rainbow exactly so Mm -hmm. you know this is this is something that affects could affect up to 20 percent of uh, the kids in the province so to your point we need to we need to pay attention to it oh yeah sean um i'm looking at the chat here uh there's a lot of love for you there's a lot of love for your family there's a lot of love for your child um 
<sighs> I'm just floored. I'm yeah. just floored. Well, I think Higgs has been able to get away with it because New Brunswick is, you know, and we understand it. We're a small province. We're not on everyone's radar. And uh, I think he's getting away with things here that he wouldn't necessarily get away with uh, in, say, Ontario or someplace with uh, more scrutiny. And I think that's one reason they're doing it here, to be honest, is they're seeing what works. This is a testing ground for for other markets. And uh, you know, there's Steve Outhouse is running the Premier's re-election campaign. He's someone who's worked with Daniel Smith out west and who's worked with the, the federal mm -hmm. Tories. I, I think they're... They're seeing what works and what doesn't and uh, what resonates with folks here. And uh, so we're just, I think we're the uh, the tip of the spear. I think we're the leading edge. And this is definitely going to start popping up elsewhere. Oh, yeah. No, I completely agree. You are the tip of the spear. Yeah. It's they're, they're, they're testing the waters in, you know, a smaller population area to see what they can get away with. I agree. And oh, boy. Yep. Wow. Well, we started this year off by saying 2024 is the year of pushback. The silent majority is not going to sit back and take the lies, misinformation, disinformation, and gaslighting anymore. We're, we're, we're building a community here that is going to push back and fight back for the dream that Canada is and, and for the country that Canada can be, where we all have equality and equity and diversity. Yeah. And um, we, we can get there. It's just so many of us have been quiet for so long. And that is changing. Yeah. Because the, the, the loud voices we hear, it's a very small percentage of the population. And also, um, for viewers who are watching right now, later, who will hear it on the podcast, uh, if you're from New, one, New Brunswick in particular, but elsewhere, if you happen to be from the trans community and you feel safe enough uh, coming on the show, uh, if you don't want to be uh, visual on camera, we can make that. If you need to have your voice altered, we can mm -hmm. do that as well. Um, but if you want to, um, we would like to hear from you so that people can hear it from you. Absolutely. You have a home here as well. All right, just putting the call out there. All right, uh, Sean, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you for giving us um, so much substance and clearly speaking from the heart. Um, I appreciate uh, it. Thanks a so bunch, guys. It's, just, uh, it's a you have our respect and you have our admiration and you definitely oh. have our support. Absolutely. Greatly appreciate it. Thanks for helping me spread the word about what's happening in New Brunswick. Anytime. 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 Right. You take have care. a beaver wific week. <laughs> <laughs> oh man wow okay oh, I, I thought we were just going to be talking about this issue but that man is a mess and i'm not talking about sean i'm talking about the premier here no no hugs he's a yeah, hot no. mess uh, i know i know and, and again this is the tip of the spear right this is not this this is <laughs> Well, here's the thing. From when you here, say if tip we do not spear, push right? back. Yeah, here's the thing when you say tip of the spear. It's Mo invoked the notwithstanding clause, and Higgs isn't even doing that yet. No, not yet. Right? Is that something yet. he's keeping in his back pocket? Is And I know that there are certain things when you go to the court, because I heard a kid, yeah, I, I saw a kid in the chat going like, where's the Supreme Court on this? Well, the Supreme Court can't do anything on this until that case actually gets to it. That's right. Um, they and can't it, just dive you know, in and take over. It's not how yeah, it works. Yeah, it's not how it works. And, you know, and before that happens, it has to go through all the provincial courts and, you know, mm -hmm. the regular court and the court of appeal. And then it has to, you know, and all the challenges and whatnot. So it, it'll take a while. Oh, yes. This would take a while before it gets to the Supreme Court. And a lot of kids, a lot of adults can be severely hurt in the meantime. And that is part of the plan. You know, it's like, well, you know, we might lose in the end, but, you know, think of all, uh, from their perspective, think of all the good we'll do in the meantime. Right. Uh, good. It's just, you know, maybe, well, from their perspective, Right, uh, because you know, like you said, 
you know, with uh, James Carville when he was talking that these people believe in mm -hmm. this with every fiber of their being. They actually think that they are fighting the good fight. This Not all of them. Part. Some of them are just completely cynical and they just think that this is the thing that will work. Mm -hmm. And they just don't oh, care yeah. who they hurt along the way. But those, uh, they're almost worse. They are mm -hmm. worse. Oh, because, but those who are simply really misguided or you know, just truly believe it in their hearts, um, they they're think dangerous. they're dangerous, yes, but they think they're literally doing the right God's thing. Work, man. Literally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow, 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 yeah. wow, wow, wow. Oh, my word. No wonder this guy is trying to grab onto this issue if he's such a disaster everywhere else. This is Not this is literally the only thing he's got. He thinks this is mm -hmm. his ticket. Well, you know, and, and and like we said, you know, Fatine, the internet is forever. Her past will be drudged up and put on blast, as the wow. kids say. So we I can am. let everybody know how much of a horrible human being she is and how she wants to rob you of your rights. Wow. Um, These folks want Gilead. They want to live the Handmaid's Tale. Yeah. It's not a joke. I'm not being hyperbolic. This is what they want. But they don't realize. Again, because the only passing that, the only people that pass the purity test are the testers. That's it. Yes. And eventually, when it comes to purity testers, there's another purity tester that comes along that says, hey, the guy who was doing the testing, he's not pure enough. Or mm -hmm. she's not pure enough. I'm the real deal. And that's how we keep on taking yet another step to the right. I mean, look in Saskatchewan. Kit made the, the, the comment uh, talking about Joseph Bongo who ran for the leadership of the conservative mm -hmm. party. He's the one that's funding the Theo Fleury and Jamie Salé and all of that kind of stuff. Yes. And therefore they formed a party to the right of the Saskatchewan party because Mo, Mo, who invoked the notwithstanding clause against trans kids is apparently not right enough for their liking. That is the problem with ideological politics. There is always an ideologue that will come along and say, Hey, the current ideologue is not ideological enough. Always. Always. It's inherent to the system. It's in the DNA of ideology. I am more messi messi messianic, messianic than the Messiah. I mm -hmm. am holier than the Pope. When the Pope yeah. made his decision, from the, when the Vatican announced the policy saying that gay people can be blessed, if not their unions. Mm -hmm. I say, oh, it's time to excommunicate the Pope. Yeah, Seriously. I'm sure quarterbacks saying stuff like that. I think it's hilarious considering whether you're religious or not, the Pope has kind of been studying what he does his entire life. I think he might know a little bit more and have a little bit more knowledge, skill set. Popes are well-educated individuals <laughs> when it comes to religious doctrine amongst other things. They usually speak several languages. They're, they're similar to rabbis in that they study, study, study. Knowledge is, you know, power. So, yeah, it's funny when you got an armchair quarterback making a comment like that. We need to excommunicate the Pope because he said something I don't like. I think he might know a little bit more than you. But data my Whether ass. you're religious or not. Yeah, data my ass. Yeah, yeah. Until the data suits his ass, right? Right. Well, then they wear it like a pair of pants. I just... I, like where I was going, sir. Wow. I am... St you, you know what? This is weird because I'm so rarely speechless. And I have been speechless yeah. so much on this damn show that I'm on. <laughs> Lately. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't find myself speechless very, very often. And I'm not in this moment. I'm, you know, I'm still incensed. I'm still angry. Uh, I've, the anger I expressed on Friday was genuine and I'm trying to reel it in a little bit so I can have a good day. Cause you know, it's, it's a working day and 
I have things that need to get done today, so I don't want to get too riled up about it, but stay, keep, keep your anger simmering just below the surface because this deserves your anger. This deserves your disdain. This deserves your words that cut deep because this is a man who is denying health care to children because he doesn't agree with the way they want to live their lives. He hasn't yet, but he's definitely, definitely. He's going to. He's, he's, he's if fe- he can, he will. He's feeling it up with both hands. Oh, yeah. Oh, You're God. right. He hasn't done it yet, but given the opportunity, he'll do it. Oh, yeah. Wow. Uh, the kits here, I've uh, particularly liked this episode here. We've got Kit Cassie going, this little podcast has first-rate interviews. Well done, lads. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Kit Saucy, another excellent guest. Thank you so much. Uh, we really appreciate that. We, you know, we, we try to bring some humor to the politics, but when we have guests like Neely Kaplan Mirth and, mm-hmm. and, and Sean, when we're talking about people's lives and uh, you know, we're beyond the fire hose of bullshit now, we're like the fire hose of mm-hmm. hate and oppression. Mm-hmm. There's, there are very few jokes to make and we're thankful and we're glad that you stay with us through this portion of what it is that we do as well we, you know, we talk about serious subjects but we try to make them digestible and approachable by throwing in some humor you know I have my tiara and I'll sing little songs and I've got my facial expressions and stuff and throw in a joke but you know, that you stay with us uh, when we have something that's heavier means a lot to us as well. Uh, We've got Kitabi G going, what a great show. Thank you all. Uh, Kit Cassie again, thank you, Sean, for sharing and best to your family. Um, So um, thank you, kids, for being open um, to us when we have something like this to present to you. It, it means a lot to us. It, you know, myself, totally self-serving comment, but as a rainbow person myself, who believes mm-hmm. that even our own community have done disservice to the trans community by, you know, earlier when we had same-sex marriage and rights, you know, taking ours and being okay with leaving them behind. Um, you know, even we have to look inwards and we ourselves have some work to do so uh, you know i'm just listening in agreeing i'm I, i'm not yeah part of that conversation yeah. right so um again thank you you know we're we're dedicating shows and we're dedicating dedicating topics to people i who identify as one percent of the population right and so it's like they need a bigger voice they need a bigger platform and if we can help provide that damn it we're gonna do it yes but it's not Right, like, like well, you know, oh, why are we talking about them again? Why are we talking? You know, there, there can there can be that. It's like it's because, and as Mister Grizzly mentioned, who's next? Who's next? It's what it boils down to. Who is next? You, they started in the U.S. with Roe v. Wade, and now states are talking about taking away contraception altogether. Then they'll end gay marriage. Or, sorry, let me rephrase that. Then they'll end same-sex marriage. And then they will outlaw trans people. And, you, and then they will round them up. And you know that if they do that, at some point they're going to come for interracial marriage and interfaith marriage. And I'm not being hyperbolic. There is no this limit. has happened before. It's happened before. There is no limit. For the purest of the absolute pure, there is no limit. That's right. All right, kids and cubs. Whew. That's the end of this Everyone. episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show. We hope that you love listening to us because we love making this to you, particularly when, even though the subject is hard, this, it matters to us. So we do, mm-hmm. we do love making this for you. Sharing is caring. So please, please, please share this with your peeps and poops. If you have anybody who needs a little bit of education, who needs some education, if you know people who uh, are good people, 
decent people who just may be in the dark and need mm. to hear it from the parent of a trans child. Okay. Make sure. Make sure that uh, they hear about this. Uh, I see what you did there, Mr. Grizzly. <laughs> Kid Dan, Paul has to go change his shirt. <laughs> Great show, because for those listening at home, Mr. Grizzly is wearing an Ottawa Senators jersey, and I believe Kit Dan is a big Toronto Maple Leafs fan. So, yes. <laughs> um, sharing is caring, so please share this episode with uh, people that you know. And again, I'm reiterating it. If you happen to be from the trans community, if you're in New Brunswick in particular, but anywhere in Canada, and you would like mm. to come on the show, please, we do want to hear from you. I, I've had a few uh, colleagues that I've I've asked if they would be interested, and they're kind of like, mm. I'm like, no, I, I'm like, no pressure. I just thought I'd ask if you'd like to come and talk. If you don't want to, completely fine. And and I didn't even get to offer the the anonymity aspect. They're like, no, I just want to. I'm like, oh no, no issue. No issue. I don't want to put you on the spot. I, I just was hoping to have somebody from the community be able to share what, you know, what it was like for them growing up, what it was like for them, how they felt. And because many people don't understand. Yep. If, I mean, I didn't when I was much younger. Yep. I didn't understand. Eventually there will I be believed, someone. And, well, and, and it's like our guest said, you know, uh, when you were younger, you were out in the back and you'd hear the, 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 the rumors from the older fellas in your group and you would believe them because why would they lie to me you know they're older they're more and you were like you were a young teenager oh yeah and you would believe them that they were just these weird perverts you want it's like no no that's not what it is you have to learn and if you open up your mind you can learn so and your heart mind and heart yes but if we can get the mind open first yep. then the heart will follow yes we are all people first period you can just, just deal on people deal on it on a basis of pure humanity if you were in those shoes if you were in those heels how would you mm -hmm. like to be treated and then do that you need it's, to be able to put yourself in that position like you said it's really not hard how you know it's not that difficult what if it was me not that question doesn't get asked often enough. And that was one of the things that, that sort of changed my perspective on a lot of things, along with some, some members of my peer group who, who, you know, said, Paul, that's a lie. This is, you know, I wasn't always this guy. 30 years ago, I was a different person than I am today. 30 years ago, I was 25 and didn't know a damn thing about anything. But I learned because I opened up my mind and I was willing to listen. And as I got older i've learned and experienced and it's like no i i need to put this to work to fight for those who don't have a voice yeah well, i have to do it yeah 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 we all have to do remember we're one canada yeah we all have a part to play Whew. if you would like to subscribe and make sure you do not miss an episode you do not have to thanks to the ray girl you go to our pod page, that's podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver, lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. And when we have something fresh off the bandwidth, it comes directly to you. Or you could scan the QR code that has just appeared under my chin if you're watching live. If you want to subscribe in other ways, we have the True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated YouTube page. You go there. We have three buttons for you. Make like Kit Elaine and smash, smash, and smash. Like, share, subscribe, which are our three favorite words other than Mr. Grizzly, take it away. Free beer today. And you can help us with some free beer today by scanning that QR code by Mr. Grizzly's head if you're watching live or if you are listening going to our coffee page. That's coffee, spelled K-O-F-I dot com, slash eager beaver, lowercase letters, all in one word. And that is where you will find the Beaver Lodge Emergency Hydration Fund, where you can make a small donation to keep us... Well, since Jen is here today, moist. Moist. <laughs> <laughs> because we love speaking moistly to you. And uh, thank you so very much to Kit Cheryl, who uh, 
gave us our first tip of the year. Thank, oh, thank you, you very much. I did that on the 5th. Said, your show gives me hope we can make positive changes. We can. Together we can make positive changes. Together we can. We can't do it on our own. We need your help. We need your help to spread. And again, sure, it's self-serving. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're trying to earn money at this. All we've been doing is putting money into it. So it's self-serving to say, please like, share, and subscribe. I get that. But we're building a community. And to do so costs money. We need your help. Yep. It's as simple as that. Many hands make light work. And now we're not only building a community, because get what's given going on with Cryer and the slap suit and the extra $25,000 Cryer's trying to raise to try to bring out, uh, you know, to, to mount some an effort. We're now trying to build a movement. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you were here first. Those of you who have been that. watching this show like this, you are the foundation of this movement that we're building. When I started this 12 years ago, when we were with, when I was with a group um, informally called Canadians Rallying to Unseat Stephen Harper, we were getting to a point where we were going to start to try to fundraise, to try and buy some billboard space. Mm -hmm. And things kind of fell apart. Um, and then I started the blog, and I was really hoping that over those 10 years that somebody would like my writing and, you know, that I would be where David Mosscrop is now or Evan Scribshaw. And that mm -hmm. didn't happen. And then this came along. And yeah, maybe this is the avenue through which it happens. But when I say democracy is something that you do, that's not a joke. It's not just a tagline. It's something I believe deep in my core. Oh, yes. yes. And I've seen it happen, being a member of the gay community, seeing what happened with through the HIV movement yes, and how people gathered and how visibility at all costs, at any cost, became a credo of our community. Because if you were HIV positive back then, they said, you know, you broke out with Kaposi's sarcoma. You couldn't hide anymore. Mm -hmm. People could tell. Yeah, they knew right away. So we had there to come no, out. Yeah. We had we to could not keep it under the radar. Anymore. We couldn't pass anymore. Mm -hmm. So, and look where we've come. Mm -hmm. In a short time, historically. A very short time. A very short time. When you think about it, yeah. It is possible, but it takes good people deciding, you know what? I may not be the expert in this. I may not know enough yet to participate in this discussion and maybe not say something that's awkward or wrong or, but I know my heart. And I can tell right from wrong. And this is wrong. And it's wrong enough mm -hmm. for me to get up and do something about it. That's what you guys do when you listen to our show. That's what you guys do when you donate to us. That's what you guys do when you tell your friends, when you share, when you retweet, when you, you know, retweet something and say, hey, you need to watch these guys. Or, and you add something of yourself to it. Every action like that is something that you're doing. It's a brick that you are built, you are laying down. Yes. So it really, really does matter. And every single one of you has something to contribute. Even if you think you don't, trust me, you do. Oh, yeah. Right. So I'm going to leave that as my democracy is something that you do statement. Of course, the usual stuff. Go get your shots and write your letters and all of that stuff. But... You know, just do the work. Just do the work of democracy. Right? Vote and care about things bigger than yourself. And trust me, you will be there. You'll learn the jargon eventually. Mm -hmm. right? Don't let Almost the things you can't do stop you from doing the things you can. Don't let the things you don't know stop you from acting on the things you do. If you know something's wrong, take action. Yes. Okay. 
Oh, all right. Um, so yes, we did the coffee. We did everything like that. We did democracy, something that you do. So Mr. Grizzly, do you have some words of wisdom? You know, today has been a heavy, heavy show, right? There's no question about that. It's, uh, but it's a show that, that is important and one that we need to, again, self-serving, spread the word, of course, but you need to consider that who's next. Who is next? They're going after trans children. They'll go after trans adults next. Then they'll go after the entire rainbow community and pick you off one by one by one. Eventually, they'll come for me because I'm a supporter of all of those folks. And your whiteness will not save you from what they have in store for you. No, it won't. That's how it works. Eventually, they will come for me. I'm, I know this. They will come for me because you supported those. I'm like, yeah, I did, because they're human beings who have a right to exist and live. And why can't we try and give them a shot at having a better life? So stand up for those who can't stand up. Make your voice heard for those who cannot speak. Don't take over, but just be there to support and raise your voice when asked. And that's what it boils down to, my friends. Absolutely. All right, Mr. Grizzly, please roll them credits. I will get on that right away, sir. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver media podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum. And The Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Uh, kids, I don't have a particular Easter egg for you, but uh, again, exactly. Yeah, you put it right up there, Mr. Grizzly. Just some more comments. Uh, Kit Janet, I'm not sure I have seen your name on our chat before. This might be a first Janet's one. Janet's joined from time to time. Okay. She's a friend. All right. Yeah. So She was a roommate, actually, for a short time period. Oh, there you go. Well, hello. But uh, please read the comment, Mr. Grizzly. My daughter has been excluded from family events because of who she is. We were uninvited from a wedding. Bridezilla was mad. She'd definitely outshine her. The latest, we were uninvited Christmas Eve. It's horrible and disgusting. Mm -hmm. Now, I've not met Janet's daughter, but I have heard Janet's daughter's music on Spotify. And Janet, if you could send me the link, I'll post it again for folks. Uh, some brilliant music, uh, brilliant artist, and a, a, beautiful, a beautiful woman. Like, just, just a shining... A shining example of what your child can be when you as a parent love them and support them. Yep. We have uh, Kit Miss Sedeka here. They've already come for me. I've been called a traitor and child abuser. Oh, and even pedophile for supporting trans kids. There's Kit Cassie. Everyone you can stand up. Brandon Manitoba kept reformers off the school board and we kept them out of provincial government. Don't give up. There's lots of examples. Lots of examples. So, yes. Yes. Please, please do. And a little bit on the happier, I guess, um, side for an uh, Easter egg. Uh, because, you know, I'm a big tennis fan. Qualifications for the Australian Open are starting. Uh, we have uh, four Canadian women in the qualifying round and a Canadian man. So uh, let's cheer for them and uh, hope that things go well there. All right, kids, cubs, have a most beaverific day. We'll Much love. Bye.